Hello and welcome to the Monday, December 4th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Researchers from Binarly discovered multiple vulnerabilities in UEFI firmware that uh, are not necessarily easy to exploit, but given how ubiquitous these vulnerabilities are, are certainly a concern given that UEFI firmware is often sort of your root of trust when it comes to different operating systems and computers. They call the flaw logo fail because, well, it deals with the boot logo. The boot logo is not necessarily something that you may consider super security sensitive or such. It's kind of neat that you can change the logo being displayed by your system from the manufacturer's given design to, well, whatever you would like it to be. But of course, displaying this logo does require that the firmware is able to parse these image formats and image format parsers did have a number of vulnerabilities in the past and it's exactly what's happening here they're using outdated libraries to display jpegs and uh, other uh, image formats that may be used here and as a result the system then is exploitable because these flaws can then be used to execute operate code at the time the system boots bypassing security features like secure boot what makes this attack kind of special and dangerous is that it doesn't actually modify any of the firmware's code. So any kind of code integrity checks on the firmware are not going to protect you against the vulnerability as the exploit is run whenever you're booting the system and in that sense kind of persistent as long as the image remains on the system. And then, well, uh, moving from a very technical to a not very technical, probably more successful exploit, uh, Wordfence is reporting that they have seen uh, various phishing emails uh, trying to trick WordPress administrators into installing fake plugins. Keeping WordPress and all of its plugins updated, of course, is far from easy. I stopped really mentioning uh, WordPress plugin vulnerabilities here in the podcast just because there are so many of them and always hard to figure out uh, what's important, what's not important when it comes to these plugins. But this latest threat is using good old emails claiming to come from the WordPress security team, even mentioning a CVE number that's actually fake. And that's probably kind of your best tip off here that is a fake uh, vulnerability because uh, typically many of these uh, WordPress plugin vulnerabilities do not get CVE numbers. And then instead of downloading the updated plugin, of course, you end up downloading a backdoor and installing it into your WordPress install. Be careful and uh, always download your software from trusted sources and an email, even if it comes or claims to come from the WordPress security team, should not be a trusted source like that. And researchers from Arctic Wolf published a brief write-up showing how ClickSense is being used in order to compromise enterprises and install the Cactus ransomware. ClickSense is one of those uh, enterprise data management uh, analytics uh, platforms, a pretty massive uh, system, and uh, as that, of course, also subject to various vulnerabilities. The particular vulnerability that uh, is being exploited here was apparently being discovered end of August by Praetorian. And uh, I'll link uh, to the blog by Arctic Wolf as well as to the original discovery of the vulnerability by Praetorian. So you have a little bit uh, more background here. Praetorian actually noted that back when they found a vulnerability, 6,000 instances of ClickSense were exposed to the internet. I'm not... uh, enough familiar with ClickSense to know whether or not it needs to be exposed in it. I doubt it, uh, but again, not really sure sort of how it's uh, being used and for example, where it's uh, collecting its uh, data from other than sort of just presenting uh, that uh, web user interface in order uh, to analyze uh, the data. 
And then we got a critical update from VMware that I don't think I mentioned yet, may have mentioned that last week. It was released on November 30th. Originally, the vulnerability CVE 2023-34060 became publicly known on November 14th. We now do have a patch available for this. So definitely apply this. It's an authentication bypass that that uh, can be exploited via port 22. So SSH or 5480. That's the appliance management console. It's not exploitable via port 443. Well, that's it for today. And don't forget, I also teach classes ever so often. You can see a list of classes on the podcast detail page for this episode. The next class, actually in a week in DC, probably too late to sign up now. Still, of course, technically possible. I'm also going to teach the same class, our Defending Web Application class, in early January online. Well, thanks for listening. and. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.